Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Jack Benny. There's a tough job ahead of us in winning this war, and millions of more wax are needed to help win it. This need is real. It's crucial. And if you have menfolk overseas, this is your way of speeding their return. Enlistment in the wax means many unusual opportunities for women. There are 239 different jobs to choose from. And as a WAC recruit, you can select the Army Air Forces, Ground Forces, or Service Forces. Your pay as an enlisted WAC or an officer is exactly the same as Army pay. You'll lead an interesting life. You may get a chance for service overseas. The uniform you wear will win attention and respect. It's the uniform of your country. You are eligible for the wax if you're an American citizen between 20 and 49 years of age with no children under 14. And you can apply at the nearest U.S. Army recruiting office. Remember, this is invasion year. As a WAC, you can share with our brave fighting men the responsibility and the honor of winning this war. The Grape Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes program coming to you from the Army Airfield at Lemoore, California and starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Look, folks, the crops are good this year, and there's enough food to go around if we all do our part and back up Uncle Sam's no-point, low-point food program. That means if we all eat plenty of the swell foods we can get for a few points or no points. Now, one of the foods we're asked to eat more of are cereals with whole grain food values because they're plentiful, thrifty, wholesome, and they cost no points at all. Well, moldy rich grape nuts and grape nuts flakes are two delicious cereals that are crackling full of all around whole grain nourishment, including proteins, iron, niacin, and vitamin B1. And don't forget that cereals with whole grain nourishment, like grape nuts and grape nuts flakes, are a must for that adequate breakfast you should eat. Yes, doctors and dietitians say you should get at least one quarter of the entire day's nourishment at breakfast. So start the day right, folks. Eat a good breakfast, do a better job, and enjoy nourishing no point grape nuts or grape nuts flakes every morning. gentlemen, tonight we're broadcasting from the Army Airfield at Lemoore, California. And now, folks, I don't mean to brag, but I've been a radio announcer for 15 years. And a mighty good one, too, Don. I know. <laughs> hmm. And of those 15 years, 11 have been spent in introducing Jack Benny. How proud you must be, Don. 11 long years. 572 weeks of introducing Jack Benny. Benny, nothing but Benny, Benny, Benny. Don. Awake or asleep, it's Jack Benny, Jack Benny, Jack Benny. Donzy boy. It's driving me mad. <laughs> Don. Donzy kiddo, what's come over you? <laughs> I can't stand it any longer, I tell you. I can't stand it. <laughs> Quick, somebody hand me a wet towel. <laughs> Don. Don, Don. Where, where, where am I? Uh, wh what happened? Don, we're at the Army Airfield at Lemoore, California, and you were introducing me. Oh, oh, yes, yes, I remember. Oh, As I was saying, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce America's best-loved personality, a man who is everybody's friend, Jack Benny. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is Jack Benny talking, and Don, I was surprised, really amazed at the way you broke down during my introduction. After all, you've been with me for 11 years. I couldn't help it, Jack. It was just something that's been pent up inside of me, and I've been fighting against it. 
Oh. Well, how long has this been bothering you? Eleven years. <laughs> Eleven years? Why, Don, I remember the day you came, to, you came to me and auditioned for the job. You were so eager and enthusiastic. Well, for heaven's sakes, that was 11 years ago. When's the audition over? What? When are you going to hire me? <laughs> Don, are you trying to force me into making a snap judgment? <laughs> After all, I've got to think it over. That's only fair, you know. Well, I'm giving you my ultimatum, Jack. Either you'll have to start paying me right now or I'm walking off the show. Well, uh... I'm waiting for your answer. Don, don't rush me. My goodness. After all, I can't hello, say... Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. You're just in time. <laughs> well, am I glad to see you. Oh, Jack, what were you and Don talking about? It's not important, Mary. Well, how do you like being out here at the Lemoore Airfield, Mary? Oh, it's all right, but as I was walking over here from the PX, one of the cadets grabbed my hat as a souvenir. Well, why didn't you grab it back? I couldn't. He was in a BT-15. <laughs> oh, Mary, they, uh, they don't fly that low. They don't, huh? All I know is when they have a date with a girl, they pick their flowers on the way. <laughs> Really? How do you know so much about these boys? Well, when we got here this morning, one of the cadets told me he'd show me how to fly an airplane. So we went up for two hours. Uh, did you learn anything? No, I knew how to kiss that way before I went up. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Mary. The cadet didn't take you up without an instructor, did he? That guy didn't need one. <laughs> oh. Well, what do you say, Jack? I'm waiting for your answer. I'll be with you in a minute, Don. Uh, tell me, Mary. <coughs> Mary, are you as popular here at Lemoore as you were at the other camps we visited? Well, I don't know, but that handsome cadet who took me up in the airplane went for me in a big way. Really? Yeah. He wants to impress me and show me how sophisticated he is. Uh-huh. So tonight he's going to take me to the El Patio. <laughs> El patio? Yeah, that's Spanish for lift your feet a little higher. You're stepping on my face. <laughs> oh, is it? Is it uh, oh, fella, you should see this gang. Is, is it? Is it? Is the El patio crowded? Huh? Crowded? Yeah. A private walked in there one night and came out wearing a second lieutenant for a hat. <laughs> well, what do you know? What do you know, a brass hat? Well, that's very good. That's good. Jack, Jack, I'm still waiting for an answer. Don, don't be such an eager beaver. What's the matter? <laughs> a fat one, too. <laughs> Don, can't you... Don, can't you see I'm talking to Mary? But you've already talked to Mary. Now, I want a decision or else. Jack, tell me, what's this all about? Mary, it's nothing. Well, I don't know. Every time you say it's nothing, somebody sues you for it. <laughs> Well... Now tell me, what does Don want? Well... Go ahead, tell her. Well... Hello, Mr. Benny. Dennis, how are you, kid? <laughs> well, well, if it isn't Dennis Day. If it isn't, his underwear fits me perfectly. <laughs> No, no, Dennis. When I say if it isn't Dennis Day, it's just a figure of speech. It's like a sight for sore eyes. My underwear? <laughs> no, no, forget it, kid. Well, anyway, Dennis, I'm glad you're here. I really am. Thanks. Yes, sir, I'm sure glad to see you. You know, kid, I've always had your interest at heart. Gee, Mr. Benny, do you really mean that? Of course I do. And my mother said you were a louse. <laughs> Your, uh, your mother certainly doesn't like me, does she, Dennis? No, every time I mention your name, she calls you a louse. Well, then why do you keep mentioning my name? She tricks me into it. <laughs> oh. 
Anyway, Mr. Benny, I don't care what my mother says. I like you. Well, thanks. Thanks, Dennis. And now, fellas... You've oh, always been okay with me. Well, thanks, kid. Thanks, thanks. And now, fellas, before You know, we... Mr. Benny, sometimes I wish you were my father. You do? Well, that's nice. And now, fellas... So does my father. <laughs> Well, I don't, uh, I don't blame them, kids. Say, Dennis, when your mother and father have those arguments, whose side are you on? I don't know. They keep shoving me back and forth. <laughs> oh, well, you must have quite... Jack, a... I'm waiting. Uh, what did you say, Mary? I didn't say anything. That was Don. Oh, yes, yes, Don. Say, Dennis, it's about time for your song. What are you going to sing for the boys? This is a lovely way to spend an evening. Good. Well, go right ahead. Jack, I've waited as long Don, as I... Don, Dennis is going to sing. Please don't interrupt him. Go ahead, kid. Take your time, Dennis. Take your time. Lovely, never, never change. Keep that breathless charm. Won't you please arrange it? Cause I love you Just the way you look tonight This is a lovely way To spend an evening And think of as you This is a lovely way to spend an evening and think of anything that I'd rather do A casual stroll through a garden A kiss by a lazy lagoon Catching a breath of moonlight I'm in a favorite tune This is a lovely way To spend an evening I want to save all my nights And spend them with you a lovely way to spend an evening dedicated to the El Patio and sung by Dennis Day. <laughs> and very good, Dennis, very good. There's nothing better than listening to your voice. And now, fellas... What else can you do with it? I wouldn't know. And now, boys... Hey, Mr. Vinny. What? Did you hear Fred Allen's program last week? No, no. I never listened to Allen. Every time he's on the air, I put my radio out in the garden to get rid of the Japanese Beatles. You know? <laughs> Gosh, does Mr. Allen's program kill the Japanese beetles? No, but after 10 minutes of listening to it, they tap on my window, I hand them a knife, and they commit Harry Carey. <laughs> you know, Allen's a sort of a coast-to-coast flip gun, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Jack, I heard his show last week, and you know what Alan called you? I don't care. He said you were the Surrey with no fringe on top. <laughs> well, now, isn't that clever? The Surrey with no fringe on top. Oh, hubba, hubba, hubba. Isn't that clever? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jack, you're just sore because Fred Allen is funnier than you are. Listen, Mary, I played in vaudeville with that guy, and I know just how funny Alan is. He'd start off his act by laying an egg, and for an encore, he'd hatch it. <laughs> So don't tell me about Alan. 
All right, Jack. Why, when he played a theater, it was so empty, the balcony came down and sat in the orchestra. <laughs> so don't tell me about Alan. All right, Jack. And what right. a ham he is for applause. In one theater, a mouse trap happened to snap shut, and he took four bows. <laughs> Don't tell me about, about Alan. Alan. I, know, I know, I know, I know. You said it. <laughs> and now, fellas, and now... <laughs> the sorry with no fringe on top. Oh, boy, that's terrific. <laughs> oh, that's my idea of comedy. <laughs> How do you like an ungrateful guy like that? Oh, well. Hiya, Jackson. What's all the excitement about? Oh, hello, Phil. Hello. Hello. That's that. Say, Jackson, uh, what's the Wilson laughing about? Who knows? <laughs> Go ahead, Don. Tell Phil a joke. Okay, get this, Phil. Last week, Fred Allen... <laughs> Don, 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 hold your... Don, hold your stomach still. You're air conditioning the theater. <laughs> Please. Well, come on, Don. Lay it on me. Let me hear it. Well... Fred Allen called Jack the Surrey with no fringe on top. <laughs> Isn't that terrific? What's a Surrey? <laughs> there you are. It's, uh, it's supposed to be a gag, Phil. A gag? Why, my baby can think of better jokes than that, and she's only, only, uh... Two. Two years old. <laughs> Remember, I figured out her age for you last week, remember? Oh, yeah. And you know something, Jackson? Alice knew it all the time. Really? Yeah. Well, well, hubba, hubba, hubba. Well, Phil, it's a shame. <laughs> you know, Phil, it's really a shame, you know. You're, you're such an intelligent-looking fellow. It's too bad you didn't have better schooling. Well, it ain't my fault, Jackson. You see, my folks wanted me to be a great musician. A great musician. Uh, Phil, it took you five years to learn how to put a nickel in a jukebox. <laughs> Well, Jack, I've never seen you put a nickel in a... Maybe tube. not, but I know how. <laughs> anyway, look who calls himself a great musician. Oh, what are you talking about? I'm getting along all right. I'm doing as well as Harry James. You're doing as well as Harry James? Certainly. Alice is just as pretty as Betty Grable. <laughs> oh. Oh, I see. Well, uh, well, looking at it from those angles, from that angle, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I must, I must agree with you. Oh, by the way, Phil, uh, Phil, you say you're a great musician. Just what instrument of any do you play? Are you angling? I mean, are you kidding? I played drums for 12 years. Oh. Say, Phil, if you played drums for 12 years, how come you became an orchestra leader? I lost one of the sticks. <laughs> well, I'll... I'll give you the address of Uncle Dan's flop house in case you lose the other one, you know? <laughs> anyway, Phil, I'm a better musician than you are. At least I'm not afraid to play my instrument. No wonder. You've got the only violin in the world with a built-in foxhole. <laughs> built-in foxhole, built-in foxhole. <laughs> When Jack plays, the fox comes out and takes up a collection. Mary, I had to let the fox go. He wanted a 10% cut. I can go along with a gag. Say, I'm kind of foxy myself. You're too old to be wolfy. Dennis. Don't be mad. I don't know what it means. Well, if you don't know what you're talking about, be quiet. Now, Phil, as long as you've got one stick left, how about shaking it at your sad sack musicians and see if, a, see if a band number comes out? Okay. Wait a minute, Phil. I'll take the phone. Hello? Oh, how are you? Yes, I'm broadcasting from the Lemoore Airfield today for the soldiers. What? You'd like to entertain at a camp, too? Oh, sure. You needn't be afraid. Soldiers are wonderful audiences. Of course they'll laugh at you. Sure, sure. Now you go right up there and don't be nervous. You're welcome. So long. Who is that? Bob Hope. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Phil. Let's have a number. Let's have a number. One more. 
more time Just one more time Let me do the things that I used to do Let me sit down to some tea for two One more time Just one more time You can ball me out, you can call me names If you let me play those parlor games One more time Just one more time Eating all alone, being all alone's making me lazy Walking all alone, talking all alone's driving me crazy One more time Just one more time You can call me names, you can drink my gin If you snap that lock and let me in One more time All alone, talking all alone, it's driving me crazy. One more time, just one more time. Let me touch that skin I love to touch that I didn't think I'd miss so much. One more time. That was. That was just one more time sung and played by Phil Harris and his Makes You Want to Go to Hanford Orchestra. <laughs> and now, kids, before we go any further, in fact, I meant to tell you about this at lunch. I had the funniest dream last night. It was so realistic, and all of you kids were in it. We were in your dream? Yes, it was the strangest thing. You see, I dreamt I was an air cadet here at Lemoore. And Mary... Yes? You were my girlfriend. And Phil... Yeah? You were my flight instructor. And Don... Yes? You are my pal, and Hetty... Oops, wrong dream. <laughs> anyway, last, last night I was so tired, I thought... Now, wait a minute, Jack. I'm not going to be your pal even in a dream unless you give me your answer. Are you starting that again, Don? If you've waited 11 years, you can wait till the end of the program. And incidentally, you've got a commercial to do, so let's have it. Until you give me your answer, I'm not doing any commercial. Oh, you're not, eh? Well, let me tell you something, Don. If you think you're the only one that can do it, you're sadly mistaken. What do you mean? It takes years to become a good announcer. Oh, yeah? Well, I'll just pick anyone here. And... Hey, wait a minute. There's the bus driver, the guy that drove the boys in the band up here. He can read it. Hey, driver, come here a minute. Yes, sir? Now, driver, take Mr. Wilson's script and read what it says near the bottom of page 10. Okay. I'll show you, Wilson. Now, go ahead, driver. Ladies and gentlemen... When you get up in the morning and want a good breakfast, why don't you try grape nuts or grape nuts flakes? They're multi rich sweet as a nut, and both have whole grain nourishment. Very good. Very good. Grape nuts are delicious and new, new, new. Tricious. Grape nuts are delicious, new and tricious. <laughs> No, no, it isn't new and Tricious, it's nutritious. Oh, you know, I drive a bus. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Continue. Huh? Grape nuts are a mighty thrifty buy in the big 12 Oz. That's ounce. Oh. oh. You know, I drive a bus. I know, I know you do, I know. <laughs> now, now, go ahead. Huh? In the big 12 ounce package. They're delicious with sugar and... Well, what's the matter? I gotta turn the page. <laughs> All right, driver, what's, what's taking you so long? I always stick out my hand before I make a toy. <laughs> oh. They're delicious with sugar and cream. They're not ration, and they're very econ... econ... Um, you know, I drive a bus. I know, I know. Now finish it. Nomical. Hmm. So remember my motto, eat a good brick, fast and do a better job. <laughs> Look, jerk, that's eat a good breakfast and do a better job. Anyway, thank you very much. You're welcome. Hey, you know, Mr. Benny, back there where I stuck my hand out to turn the page? Yes. That was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was very clever, very clever. Now, go over there and sit down. Say, Mr. Benny. What, kid? If you ever want a singing commercial, I can do it. A singing commercial? You can? Sure. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. 
I've got a beautiful feeling that grape nuts and grape nuts flakes with sugar and cream are coming my way. <laughs> George Burns can sing it that good. Hey, hey that's kind of cute, though. Huh? You think it's too subtle? No, 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 no. We'll, we'll use it sometime. Hey, Mr. Money, why don't you tell me you wanted a song? I can do that, too. Well, look, it may be some other time, driver. Mercy, don't send those. He don't send it. Lambsy, grape nuts. A kid will eat grape nuts, too. Wouldn't you? <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. With cream and sugar. That's enough. Look at that's enough. That's so delicious. Now, cut that out. <laughs> Why, what's wrong with grape nuts? Nothing. I don't want to hear any more singing. Now, as I was saying, I'll get it. I hope it's a sponsor. Quiet. Hello? Hello, Mr. Berry. This is Rochester. <laughs> Rochester, you were supposed to be here two hours ago. Where are you? Stuck on the road. I'm out of gas. Out of gas? Are you sure? Yes, sir. I just looked at the gauge. Oh. Well, where does, where does the needle point? To the nearest gas station. <laughs> well, well, get some gas and pick me up after the broadcast. I got bad news on that, too, boss. I left in such a hurry this morning, I grabbed the wrong ration book. The wrong ration book? Well, there must be some way you can get the car out here. Not unless it'll run on hamburger. <laughs> Never mind that and get started right away. I want you to be here when the program's over. Well, you better sit down, honey. This is going to take longer than I thought. <laughs> Rochester, who are you talking to? A lady who's having car trouble, too. Oh, sure. Sure, I suppose she also ran out of gas. Uh-huh. And at the same time. Uh-huh. I suppose she even ran out of gas in the same place. Uh, in fact, in the same car. <laughs> That's what I thought. Rochester, you know you shouldn't be driving around with girls when you're supposed to be working. It was purely accidental, boss. I was getting into the car. Yes. When I noticed in the car parked behind me the most beautiful girl I ever saw. She was a humdinger from Coalinga. <laughs> Well, so I immediately organized a carpool. <laughs> well, I'll be... Rochester, you fall for every girl you see. But this one's different. She's gorgeous. Oh, stop exaggerating. No, really, boss. It's just like looking through Esquire with smoked glasses. <laughs> Now stop that and get here right away. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, Rochester, where are you calling from? I just stopped in a place here to have a Thomas J. Collinsworth. A Thomas J. Collinsworth? What's that? A long Tom Collins. Well, get out of there and be quick about it. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> what are you laughing at? A Surrey with no fringe on top. <laughs> Darn that, Rochester. I can't see how he ran out of gas. Play, Phil. He couldn't have used it for a chaser. I don't know. Say, Mr. Wilson, you know I'm a bus driver. Yes, yes, my good man. We all know that. And now, friends, just a word about delicious grape nuts. Hey, Mr. Wilson, could I read the commercial? Now, look, you've had your chance. Now I'm doing but it. But this time I can do a better job. Oh, well, just what makes you think so? Because I just ate a good breakfast. What? Well, you can't eat breakfast at this time of day. It's supper time. Oh, gee, I never thought of that. Well, now, you think of it tomorrow morning. Then eat a good breakfast and do a better job. And be sure to include grape nuts. Not you, Rolly. Really. For grape nuts, with that sweet as a nut flavor, that distinctive texture provides all-around whole-grain nourishment. One type of nourishment recommended by nutrition experts is a daily breakfast must. Yes, grape nuts are delicious, nutritious, thrifty. So, friends, if you want to be able to read commercials, eat a good breakfast, do a better job and featured tempting, malty-rich grape nuts, an American favorite for over 40 years. I want to thank Colonel Maughan, uh, Captain Blair, Captain Laughlin, and all the men here at the Lemoore Airfield for their wonderful hospitality. Good night, everybody. Thank you.